protagonist, Rakuro Hizudame, is known as the trash game hunter for seeking out poorly designed video games with bugs, bad gameplay mechanics, limited abilities, etc. He recently finished a notoriously bad game called Failure Chronicle and achieved his goal of beating up the annoying female protagonist character during the ending cutscene. Wanting a change of pace, Rakuro decides to try out Shangri-La Frontier, a hugely popular virtual reality MRPG with over 30 million players. In stark contrast to the trash games, it has incredible graphics, smooth gameplay, extensive character creation options, no major bugs, and an expansive open world. Rakuro creates a twin blade mercenary character focused heavily on luck instead of defense. He sells all his starter gear to raise funds for better weapons later on. His luck pays off with good drops from rare monster bunnies. After fighting dozens, he acquires a complete set of the creature's rare kitchen knife weapons. Continuing to play solo, Rakuro comes across a bridge guarded by a giant snake boss intended for a full party. Undeterred, he decides to use his character's agility and new skills to take it on single-handedly. The game's reputation means it likely won't use any unfair tricks or bug attacks. The game provides snippets of lore referring to powerful ancient beings called the Divine, who mysteriously disappeared, leaving advanced relics behind. The players take on the role of pioneers trying to uncover mysteries in the world left behind. There are hints of grand magical forces still at work. After extended early gameplay, Rakuro finds Shangri-La Frontier to be a supremely polished product with extensive content and satisfying mechanics. For the moment, it keeps his desire to seek out and conquer terrible games at bay. The main character arrives in Firstia, the starting town in the VRMORPG Shangri-La Frontier. He hopes to find another player named Hizutomi here. Firstia seems to only have high-level players, though. The main character enters the forest outside of Firstia. He battles the ravenous python, the area boss. Through observation, he learns about the game's combat mechanics. He discovers the boss has a tough hide and can inflict poison. After a difficult fight, he finally defeats the boss. Poison, the main character races to reach the inn in Firstia to set his respawn point. Another player directs him to the inn just in time. Now in Secondia, the second town, he buys some basic equipment and goes mining for materials. He has the weaponsmith create two powerful marsh daggers for him. At night, the main character fights nocturnal monsters to gain experience. One proves incredibly difficult, but also introduces the idea of unique monsters in the game. He realizes Shangri-La Frontier has much more depth than he first thought. A player named Mia encounters a scary-looking half-naked player with a bird mask named Sunraku, who had just defeated a powerful monster without any equipment. Sunraku receives a teleporter gift from a member of the Likagon clan before quickly leaving. Mia's friend explains that Sunraku fought a unique monster called Lycagon the Night Slayer. Unique monsters are special monsters that only spawn once in the entire world and are extremely difficult to defeat. Lycagon is one of the seven rumored colossal unique monsters in the game. The episode shows Sunraku battling Lycagon. Despite Sunraku's skills, Lycagon is too powerful and Sunraku is nearly killed. At the last second, Sunraku survives with one GP remaining which he believes is due to his high luck stat. Lycagon curses Sunraku before he respawns. The Lycagon's mark curse prevents Sunraku from equipping gear on his torso and legs. It also makes lower level monsters afraid of him and affects his interactions with NPCs. Frustrated by the curse, Sunraku encounters a Vorpal bunny that leads him to a secret scenario. He meets Emil the Vorpal bunny, who is a fan of his Lycagon fight. Emil takes Sunraku to meet her boss, Visachi, the ruler of a hidden land filled with Vorpal bunnies called Rabituza. Rakuro's friend Rei goes to the dojo to look for Rakuro, since he hasn't seen him during summer break. She learns he's likely been immersed in Shangri-La Frontier the whole time. Rei decides to try to find Rakuro in the game using his in-game name Sunraku. Rakuro encounters a unique scenario involving Vorpal weapons and Vorpal bunnies. This leads him to meet Vesache, a Yakuza boss-looking rabbit. Visace makes Rakuro his underling and forces him to equip an item called the Vorpal Soul Collar. Rakuro is given a tour of the palace of Rabatuza by Emil, Visace's assistant. Emil joins Rakuro's party. Rakuro decides he wants to hurry to the next city before new players flood the starting areas. Rakuro tests out the effects of the curse mark he received from Lycagon. He verifies that monsters lower level than him will flee. 
Rakuro decides to head straight for the area boss with Emil to get to the next city quicker. Rakuro and Emil arrive in a swamp to face the area boss Mud Digger. Rakuro realizes the swamp terrain is the worst possible matchup for his build. After getting some key info about Mud Digger from Emil, Rakuro prepares to confront the boss. Rakuro travels to a swamp area with NPC Emil. He plans to ignore other monsters and go straight to the area boss, Mud Digger. The swamp terrain hinders movement by trapping the player's feet. Rakuro struggles to evade Mud Digger's attacks due to the terrain. He utilizes new skills like Repel Counter and Slide Move, but runs out after a few uses. Emil supports Rakuro with her magic attacks. She boosts Rakuro's attack and helps him avoid a deadly fall. Together, they are able to take down the Mud Digger boss. Rakuro admits he had underestimated Emil. Though he wants to solo the game, he acknowledges he will need to rely on Emil as a mascot for motivation. After their victory, Rakuro and Emil make their way to the town of Thirdrima. Emil uses a magical item to disguise herself so they can enter town inconspicuously. However, they encounter a guard who recognizes Rakuro. Online, Rakuro's information and encounter with a legendary monster has been leaked and spread amongst players. Now various individuals seek to meet Rakuro for better or worse. One player going by the name Sunraku encounters a female player named Arthur Pencilgon. She accuses him of hiding information about a unique scenario in the game. Sunraku recounts his history with Pencilgon in another game called Unite Rounds. In Unite Rounds, Pencilgon was known as the Dystopian Empress. She controlled most of the game world through cunning and violence due to poor game design. Sunraku and another player named Katsu Tataki assassinated her character at one point. This sparked an enduring rivalry between them. During the confrontation, Pencilgon's animal companion named Emil the Vorpal Bunny abruptly loses her transformation magic, revealing herself as a regular bunny. Sunraku decides to exploit Pencilgon's attachment to Emil to escape into the nearby town. However, Pencilgon did not come alone. Four other high-level player killers, peak hearers, arrived to fight Sunraku. She had messaged her clan asking them to threaten Sunraku into publishing information. A battle ensues between Sunraku and the peak hairs. Sunraku demonstrates an uncanny ability to dodge attacks despite the level difference. It is revealed he earned his skills mastering many different terrible games. He also utilizes a special item to reflect curses back at his enemies. In the end, Sunraku singles out and defeats one of the peak hairs. Another high-level player named Saiger Zero arrives, recognizing Sunraku. She seems to know him well, perhaps from a previous game. Her arrival sparks more questions about Sunraku's unknown background and exceptional gaming skills. Rakuro actively seeks out the most difficult, trashiest games. His name Rakuro means easy, so he wants to seek out challenges in games instead of taking the easy path. He loves analyzing game bugs and flaws. While describing issues with a trashy game, Rakuro gets attacked in SLF by Cyger Zero. Cyger Zero tries to get information, but Rakuro has no escape. Suddenly, the attack master appears and rescues Rakuro. Rakuro escapes to Rabatuza City with the attack master. Bounty hunters try to catch Rakuro, but he manages to outrun them to safety. He is intrigued by Cyger Zero wanting to meet him about something. Soon Raku goes through intense training fighting monsters with only Vorpal weapons. It's a tough boss rush, but he analyzes attack patterns and defeats nine monsters. The tenth test is surviving five minutes against a powerful mage. Rakuro explains why he loves trash games. He wants to seek out trials while young and not take the easy path. He wants to see beautiful views and live an enjoyable life by overcoming challenges. Rakuro takes on a practical training battle against a monster called the Aberrant Wood Mage. The goal is to survive for five minutes. The Wood Mage has fast, barely telegraphed attacks that are difficult to dodge. It also gains more abilities over time, increasing the density of attacks. Feeling overwhelmed, Rakuro considers giving up. His friend reminds him that relying too much on help or giving up easily is not good. Noticing the Wood Mage uses a staff to cast spells, Rakuro manages to steal its staff. This removes the monster's ability to cast spells. However, it becomes enraged and attacks more fiercely in response. Continuing to evade while paralyzed and exhausted, Rakuro barely survives the full five minutes. Despite meeting the original condition, the battle continues. Rakuro takes the chance to attack the now physical monster directly and defeats it. 
Rakuro passes the trial and earns the title Honorary Rabatuzan. He unlocks a bonus scenario, but decides to explore more areas first after disguising himself to avoid attention. The adventure continues in the Prismatic Forest Grotto. The leader of the Ashurakai clan chastises members for failing to obtain a unique scenario reward. They explain that top players often participate in unique scenarios, so they should have prepared for powerful opponents. When questioned why he did not handle it himself, the leader states he had other priorities and believes some monsters are too difficult to defeat. Instead, he wants the clan to use the monster to gain experience. However, one member sees the leader and clan as weak and cowardly compared to in the past. The dissatisfied Ashura Kai member decides to take on the monster Weatherman alone to prove the clan wrong. She gambles that defeating it and protecting an NPC will earn her prestige and very assumptions that the monster cannot be beaten. The member travels to a new location, the Prismatic Forest Grotto, seeking the monster. Along the way, she shakes off a group of players chasing her by faking her destination. After arriving, she is awestruck by the bright, glowing environment. She easily defeats several small monsters, gathering numerous rare crafting items. Eventually, she happens upon a standoff between a giant beetle and a colony of bees. The beetle prevails by taking out their queen. Three Shangri-La Frontier players, including a self-described trash gamer, a professional gamer, and a noblewoman clan leader meet in-game. They reminisce lightheartedly about the time they assassinated the noblewoman's monarch avatar. The noblewoman, known by her username Pencil Knight, proposes that the three of them work together to try defeating the unique monster Weatherman the Tomb Guard. Unique monsters are extremely powerful foes on the same level as boss monsters. The other two are shocked at the proposal to take one on with just three people. Pencil Knight argues that fighting Weatherman is not about brute force numbers. She tried attacking it with 15 high-level players previously and failed. She wants the trash gamer for his gaming skill and the pro gamer for his professional skill. She also notes they will get only one chance, two weeks from now, right after a major game update. The trash gamer asks about involving the NPC companion that travels with him. Pencil Knight recommends he not bring her into the battle, as NPC death in SLF is permanent. This greatly distresses the NPC when she overhears their conversation. The trash gamer and pro gamer consider Pencil Knight's proposition, intrigued, but realizing she likely still has not told them everything about her reasons for wanting to fight Weatherman. However, they seem inclined to agree to her request and hear more details of her plan. Rakuro roleplays to get more information about Weatherman from an influential NPC named Vash. He learns that Weatherman is an undying body, unable to rest, who has outlived his time. This hints that Weatherman may be an undead type monster. Impressed by Rakuro's resolve, Vash decides to help out. He takes Rakuro to meet his daughter B and son Bilak, who are also talented blacksmiths. Together, they use special materials from Rakuro's battles to ascend his weapon into its ultimate true form. Rakuro meets up with two other players, Emil and Thirdrima, to take on the unique boss monster, Weatherman the Tomb Guard. Thirdrima has gone to great lengths to prepare for this fight. Even though Rakuro is inexperienced, he is determined to help in this difficult battle. The characters gather to discuss strategy for defeating Weatherman, a powerful boss with a level of 200. They realize levels will be reduced to 50 at the start of the battle, creating a minimum 150 level gap. Player skill is deemed the key to victory. Most concerning is Weatherman's strong finishing move and unclear method of damaging his mecha steed mount. Realizing they need to reach at least level 50, the characters grind levels at a secret area called Tearlight Lake. They compete to catch Lifestyle Lake Serpents, which provide good experience points. Through fighting the serpents, the characters quickly gain levels. Katso unveils powerful new Empire Bee Twin Blades weapons crafted for him by his sister Bee. The right hand blade has a special spiral edge attribute that infects enemies with corrosive poison over time. By repeatedly striking the same area, the poison corrodes through defenses. The group battles a giant Lifestyle Lake Serpent, too high level for them to normally damage. Through teamwork and using their new skills and gear, they create an opening. Katsu lands the finishing blows with his twin blades, defeating the serpent. With levels now sufficient, the group makes plans under the full moon to meet the unique NPC Setsuna of bygone days for intelligence on how to defeat the boss Weatherman. Their quest to defeat this powerful foe continues. Three.